Okay, so this is part three um, of oxidative phosphorylation. So you need to watch the first two of, of these videos, really. So we, we got to this point where we said that um, hydrogen ions, protons, are being pumped through from the um, where it's been picked up from the reduced NAD. It gets split and it's pumped through into this intermembrane space. How do we pump it through? We use electrons or the energy from electrons being passed along on complex one, three, and four. Now, provided we have a constant supply of reduced NAD coming on, we can pump loads of these things through. It's going to do two things, um, which will have more or less the same effect, really. Uh, we're going to build up a nice big supply of hydrogens on one side in the intermembrane space, which is building up a concentration gradient. There's more hydrogen here than there is on this side. So by diffusion, we would expect the hydrogens to be move, uh, to move that way back, back through. Um, it's also building up an electrochemical, uh, sorry, an electrical potential. There's a lot of charged particles here. Okay, lots and lots of charged particles. And you know, think of it, think of it like lightning. Lightning works by having a buildup of charged particles in in a cloud. And when it builds up high enough, that energy is released, goes to the ground. We're doing the same thing here. It's not lightning strike, but we're using the same principle that we're building up a lot of charges here as well. So there's the two things, and we, in fact we call it an electrochemical gradient because it's an electrical gradient and a chemical gradient. Now, can the hydrogen ions, can the proteins get through the membrane? No, they can't. Um, you know, the, the membrane is pretty much impermeable. Some does leak through. You know, little bits of hydrogen leak back through. Um, sorry, little hydrogen bits. Which hydrogen ions leak back through, and that's one of the reasons why um, oxidative phosphorylation is not as efficient as you might expect it to be because of this leakage, but mainly, mainly they don't. Mainly they come through this channel here. And this channel um, on the ATP synthase molecule is, let's put that. This molecule is able to utilize the energy of the hydrogens flowing through to generate ATP here. It makes it from, you, know, you should know this off by heart now, ADP. Um, plus an inorganic phosphate to ATP. So that's the whole principle behind this whole thing. You build up a, a, a supply of hydrogen ions and you allow it to flow through in a controlled way and you make use of that energy, that potential energy as it flows down, not along, but down the concentration gradient and down the electrochemical gradient. What happens to these hydrogens? We can't just have them simply floating around. You might say, aha, well, why don't we just pump them back through and we'll have an endless kind of cycle. Uh, nice idea, it just doesn't work that way um, because thermodynamics, there you go, there's your answer. Um, what in fact we do is these electrons, which have been uh, passed along, they're now useless to us. Again, you might think, oh, why don't I just put them back in at the beginning of the chain? Again, you just can't. It's, you know, the, the, the answer is to do with thermodynamics and physics, and um, we don't need to go into it. It just doesn't happen. There we go. That's all you need to know. What does happen, though, is when you get two of those hydrogens through, you add onto them two electrons, and we add onto it. Now, again, this sometimes confuses people. I put half O2. How can you have um, half of O2? Well, if we're talking here about moles rather than actual molecules, it's perfectly fine to have half an oxygen. Um, so you could write it like that. If you particularly wanted to balance the whole thing, let's find some space, um, you could put it like this. Okay. And if you're thinking, well, well, it doesn't particularly balance out down here, don't worry about it. There's lots of hydrogens up here. There's lots of hydrogens here. The whole thing is moving along. It doesn't need, you don't need to balance it in, in these kind of drawings, okay? If you want to balance your equations, there you can. So the oxygen is the final hydrogen acceptor. Um, a, a little point here in, in your textbook, and that's this again, a very messy bit of paper. Um, on page 90, there's a definition. It says oxidative phosphorylation. Uh, it's about the formation of ATP. Yeah, we're making ATP by adding phosphate uh, to ADP, yeah. And it says in the presence of oxygen. Now that's fine because the oxygen has to be there to pick up the hydrogens uh, and the electrons at the end. But I think it suggests that the oxygen has to be there as part of the oxidative phosphorylation process here. And it, it doesn't. And this comes back to the, the first video I showed you. Remember these electrons as they're getting passed along. If you gain electrons, 
you've been reduced. Reduction is gain, reduction is gain, reduction again. But as you pass them on, that's now lost electrons, so it's become oxidised. That becomes reduced, that becomes oxidised. That becomes reduced, that becomes oxidised. Reduced, oxidised. And so you've got a continual chain of these complexes becoming reduced and oxidised. And it's that's, that's if you like, where the energy is coming from this. That's why it's called oxidative phosphorylation. And refer to these complexes as being oxidised and reduced as they passed along, because that's what's happening to them. Um, a couple of last points on specific words. Um, chemiosmosis, which is a, a rather nice word, um, is referring to this bit where the protons flow down the concentration gradient, okay, moving from a, a higher concentration, electrochemical concentration, if you like, to a lower electrochemical concentration. And the proton motive force, which is really the idea of. Um, you know, it's the force provided by these hydrogen ions coming through. That's where the energy comes from. Um, rather like if you took a load of pails of water, like Jack and Jill, to the top of the hill, and then you poured them down. And there's Jill or Jack, it doesn't matter who. It requires energy to get them up there, to get your water up there, but then you can make use of that energy by pouring it down, perhaps onto some kind of water wheel. There we go, that spins around as you pour it down. I've just realised, sorry, you can't see that on the camera, you can't see my brilliant drawing. There we go, there's Jack or Jill using energy to go to the top of the hill, pouring the water back down. And, and it's the same idea, it's the same principle here. It's about taking energy, potential energy from one place, putting it somewhere else so you can use it um, to do what you want it to do, which in this case is to make ATP. Yeah, um, I'm not sure particularly <laughs> made things clear with these three videos, but we'll see how this goes, see if, uh, see if it makes sense to people.